Hello Enchanted Ones, and welcome back to another video. Today I will be telling you the story of how I transformed my garden into the Garden of Dreams to make this beautiful fairy garden by collecting items from the wood, getting into the mindset of a fairy, and finding the most beautiful fairy's den within the Enchanted Woods. So sit back, relax, and keep on watching. Recently, I have been designing my garden, which when I moved in was just an empty space waiting to be transformed. I was not too sure where to begin with it, but I did know one thing I wanted to do, turn it into a fairy garden. So I started really getting into gardening and growing my own plants, which I found was so rewarding. Touching the earth, planting them from seed, singing to them. It was just so therapeutic and grounding and can really teach patience. All these babies needed was a bit of time and sun and they started to bloom one by one. And now my garden was looking beautiful and attracting wildlife, there was one more thing I wanted to do, attract fairies. There was but one more thing I needed to make over in my garden, and it is this quirky tree and space at the bottom of my garden. This tree has so much character, and it's full of nooks and crannies, perfect for the wildlife of the forest. The birds love to come here and even my cat loves to sharpen his claws on it. So I knew I wanted to make it into something special. But before I could make this fairy den, I need to address a question. Something I have been asked many times before. Do I actually believe in fairies? Well, the answer is is yes, of course, I do, I do, I do, I do believe in fairies. One of my prized possessions are these earth magic oracle cards. And once I pulled out the card, a fairy, and the description really resonated with me. It said, fairies are nature spirits, thought to be the descendants from early tribes. Over time, these ancient people were conquered and displaced, and they fled to areas where humans did not venture, ultimately becoming increasingly smaller and less visible in order to better hide themselves. Fairies have assumed responsibility for the plants and trees. They work with earth magic to take care of these beings, and if you ask, they'll help you with your garden or yard. Fairies appreciate it when we show them through our actions that we love the earth as much as they do and consequently they bestow a little bit of earth magic upon us in return. Hello Enchanted Ones, welcome to the inside of my fairy arch. I thought it would be very fitting for today's video. So of course, that little description really drew me to fairies and suddenly made me think, of course, fairies are not just cartoons. It makes sense to me that they are the spirits of very, very ancient tribes. And to bring them something that they will enjoy in my garden, somewhere they can rest their head and know that they are appreciated, is a dream of mine. And also to know that, you know, maybe that gratitude will be reciprocated and the fairies will reward me with good karma, then that is just a lovely bonus. <laughs> but honestly, it is just about giving back to 
to those little fairies in a really sweet, cute ways. The plan today, I'm very excited, is I'm going to be taking you into the woods with me. I'm going to be going to two different places, Fairy's Den and the Secret Swamp. I don't know what I'm going to find. I've got a very open mind at the moment because I'm going to see if anything sticks out to me. I love having an open mind when it comes to that sort of thing. I can kind of relate it to when I go shopping sometimes. When I have something particular in mind, I never find it. But when I have an open mind, I find so many things I like. <laughs> That's what I related to anyway. So I'm really, really excited to bring you along with me today. I've got a few things ready. I haven't got a fancy basket, I'm afraid, but I do have my lovely backpack in which I can contain all of the wood. And I'm gonna finish my tea and then we're gonna go. So I look forward to seeing you there. So I ventured off into the woods, firstly stopping off at Fairy's Den, where I found some little fairy home inspiration. This is quite a boggy area and because of this I found these mossy sticks, perfect for camouflaging a little home to keep it safe. I also found some quirky looking sticks which drew themselves out to me, but I had to make a quick stop back at home afterwards as I went a bit nuts in wanting to bring this huge beech branch home with me. Afterwards, I delved deeper into the wood to arrive at the secret swamp. So here I am at the secret swamp. It's so beautiful in the woods today because all the rhododendrons are out. And yeah, just being here is just kind of making me feel like getting myself into the mindset of a fairy. And it's really interesting when you think of like a hollowed out tree or a dead tree, they will work with that and make it their home. You might remember when I told you recently that there's been a lot of commission work done in the woods. So that means there's been a lot of trees that have been cut down. That's really sad but I have an idea and it is to use things from those trees and to incorporate it in my fairy garden so it will just be kind of like a very realistic fairy den but also I'll be honouring the trees in the wood that have been chopped down to make the most of what's left of them basically so I'm very excited and I'm off to find some more. So I began by picking up sticks of all sizes, especially ones on the thinner side as they are easier to snap. Plus, I found these pieces of bark to perhaps make a roof or platform. Fir cones, stones, just anything that well and truly caught my eye. However, I was just about to go home when I found something, something down a path a path I actually named the path to nowhere. Um, so basically I don't know what to say. I just pushed past these trees that I thought led to nowhere that were behind me. And I went through them because I saw the rhododendrons. I wanted to get to the rhododendrons and I have come across the most beautiful fairy's den, literally. I feel like I'm going to cry because it is stunning and I, 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 can't, I can't express, I have to show you. I felt amazing, like I had unlocked a new level of life. It was on par with finding the secret garden. I well and truly had found a fairy haven. The little dandelion seeds everywhere, the ladder across the stream, the huge rhododendron bushes. I found the perfect fairy home, but also on further reflection, I thought maybe this was a message of inspiration 
Perhaps the fairies were telling me that my fairy garden for them needed to be secret, just like this place. When I arrived home, I was still in complete shock as to what I just witnessed. I got all of my findings out and spent the evening contemplating ideas as to how I was going to go about making this fairy garden. So the next day it was time to start building. I decided that the fairy's den would not be visible from the front of the tree. It would be built at the back, out of sight, so no one knows it's there. Just like my new find within the wood. I started to create my fairy home and as a base worked with this platform of the tree that you could use a slab of wood. Completely improvising, I started to piece together the items I found to form a rough house shape, using wood glue to help. To attach this mossy stick, I used a method where I drilled into both pieces of wood and then created a wedge between them using a small stick. And because of this, I left it nice and sturdy. The reason why I wanted it to be sturdy was because I then drilled a hole all the way through the mossy stick as I wanted to have a roof for my fairy home here but not just any roof, one I could twist to be either a platform or a roof. Then just above this, using the same method, I added another little platform onto the tree so many fairies could rest here if they wanted to, and decorating the structure with snap sticks and fir cones as I went to give it more of a cosy feel. I was so happy with my fairy home, however I thought to myself, how do I make this home more inviting? So I snapped some small sticks and created a little ladder all the way up the tree trunk from the bottom to the top so the fairies knew this ladder would take them home. Once fully really happy with the structure, I needed to get into the mindset of a fairy yet again. And I thought, what would they want to make this house a home? How would they decorate? Even though they might be able to fly, would they need a ladder? The answer for me was yes. Let's give them a ladder. Along with this perhaps pointless item, I wanted to decorate my fairy home and turn it into a fairy kingdom. For this I needed windows, so I snapped four large sticks to become the window frame and then two tiny thin sticks to be placed in the middle as the windows crosshatch. I glued the four sticks together at the seams and then turned the structure over to stick the small crosshatch on the back without showing the glue. However, if there is any glue exposed, simply cover this with a little moss. It works a treat and makes it look extra cozy and lived in. Next, of course, I needed a fairy door. I feel a fairy home is not complete without one. To make this door or any platform for that matter, all you need to do is simply place sticks for the main shape of the item in one direction. I wanted the door to have a slight curved effect at the top. Then I placed one or two sticks across the shape in another direction and glued them down and you'll have the perfect sturdy structure every time. I also repeated this technique to make a few other things. This would be an item in which the fairies could sit or sleep on, a lovely fairy bench. And lastly, I made one more structure, but this time it would be a fairy swing. And it is very simple to do this. I tied two even pieces of string around the two sticks I stuck at the bottom.
and then tied these onto the tree, making sure the length was even on both sides. Along with the swing, the last thing I did was glued everything else onto the tree, making sure it was all secure. And whilst everything dried, I decided to call it a day and go to bed. The next day was so beautiful and sunny. I came down to see the fairy garden all dried and sturdy, but also that the flowers within the fairy den were in full bloom and beautiful. It was so lovely to see these in full bloom, so I thought it would be an ideal time to make the next thing I had planned for this den, a fairy garden. For this, I used a big pot and placed this next to the tree. I planted in these plants that had an airy fairy nature to them, a salvia, a sedum and a veronica and place them around the edge of the pot, making sure I had enough space in the middle for a secret fairy's den. I nestled within the pot a sacred glass bowl I had, and I thought this would make a wonderful watering hole or pool of reflection for the fairies to go to. Around this I placed a mosaic of green crystals, making sure it would well and truly become a sacred space for them, but also so they would feel that this path and space was for them. As this pot was quite high, I placed a leftover stick leading up to the pot and it wasn't long until this stick became a simple ladder for them to climb. I then began cleaning up the space, however I realised even after the sheer amount of sticks I had used, I still had an abundance of them left over. And it was my mission to make use of every single one. I had found two huge sticks in the wood and to make the most of them, I threaded a netted curtain around one. And then because this stick had a hole in it, I was able to thread these two sticks together and then I hung these at the entranceway of the den to make it extra private for the fairies but I loved how the curtains swayed within the wind adding such a tranquil feel to the space. Next, these little sticks would simply become a fairy fence for the home making it extra private for them and weatherproof. I had a great idea for this particular stick so I got out my string and tied a piece of string to either end of the stick I then hung it onto the tree but to put on this stick I cut herbs from my herb garden and then hung these onto the stick and these would be the offerings for the fairies to enjoy and then I placed a few sticks here and there and I was left with these last sticks and these sticks were long quirky sticks that I found it difficult to snap but I had just the perfect thing I wanted to do with these sticks as they would be the perfect stem for some clay mushrooms. Before I started crafting I wanted to make the most of my new space I had created so I placed some furniture, cushions and got to work in my new secret space. To start these mushrooms, you will simply need a ball of clay. I rolled this clay between my hands, making sure all of the cracks were out and it was a smooth ball, adding water if necessary. I then placed my thumb in the middle of the ball and started pulling the clay around this to make a thick bowl shape, making sure it wasn't too thin. To help me get the toadstool shape, 
I used the inside of an egg box. So I placed the clay over this and then used my thumb, although carefully dragging it down the clay to make the bottom of the mushroom the iconic dress-like shape a toadstool has. And then after this was complete, I made sure to get out any cracks before allowing it to dry. What I love is that this shape will never be the same. Each mushroom will be unique and one of a kind. I let the mushrooms dry and it did not take long because it was so hot outside. My next step was to paint them. I used colours to match my enchanted aesthetic, but I can imagine these being painted in so many different cute ways. I painted them in block colour first, and then once this had dried, I painted them with white spots, golden tips, depth, gradient patterns. The designs you can achieve here are endless. Lastly, to make these waterproof, I purchased some sealant, which I will leave the link to down below, to make sure they do not get damaged by the weather. So I painted them inside and out and allowed them to dry completely. To assemble them, I placed the sticks firmly into the soil and simply placed the mushrooms on top. It was these mushrooms that made my fairy den truly come to life. And after four days of hard work, my fairy's den was complete. From one look, no one needs to know what is lurking behind this tree stump. The birds and my cat can enjoy this side. But when you look a little closer, the bright mushrooms will lead you into a secret world. I loved this new sanctuary. One, I can be connected with the fairies, but also surrounded by the flowers in such a condensed space. It reminded me so much of my new find in the woods, so I thought it only right to go back there, to allow the fairies to make the most of this space I had created for them whilst I was away. So I went to the place I had previously named the path to nowhere. But how wrong I was. For as we go further and further up the path, we come across these fir branches that are quite overgrown. Go through these to come to the real life fairy's den. A beautiful hidden space in which someone ever so kindly placed a little ladder here to help get across the stream. I found a sturdy branch within this mossy silver birch and contemplated this place and I truly became emotional. I just couldn't get over how I found this perfect den just when I needed the inspiration for it. However, back at the fairy garden, I can only hope and imagine and wonder what was happening there and hoping that the fairies would be enjoying themselves and their time doing what they do best. I 
thought to myself, should I name this place upon my map? Or should I keep it a secret? A secret it will be and always be. Thank you so much for watching Enchanted Ones. Please let me know what was your favourite below. Have you made a fairy garden before? And if so, what did you make for your fairies? And the big question, do you believe in fairies? All my love, Alwyn. <laughs>